Hi everyone, welcome back to Katarina's Garage. My name is Katarina Lloyd and today, well, the Capri is officially here. Now, something I am going to do with this thing, even though this is a parts car, I am not going to be reviving this car in the way that you think I am. I'm not going to get it on the road. However, I do want to attempt to get it running and driving so I can drive it around the block and make sure some of the parts work because something about this car that's really cool it's a 200 inline six and a factory four speed manual which means that these parts are like really unicorn parts and <laughs> the mustang when we built that thing it's kind of cobbled together with a bunch of different things and you know like as an example where I think if I remember correctly, the original clutch assembly for the 66 bell housing on there was designed to be a push style, if I'm not mistaken. While we now have a pull style clutch in there, it required a lot of engineering to make that work. Where this would just be absolutely perfect to just drop in, no big deal. So anyways, let's see what we can do to get this thing up and going. So this is a 1981 Mercury Capri. So first, I'm going to open the hood. We're gonna pull the plugs out and then I'm gonna dump the Marvel Mystery Oil in it because I'll show you why I'm doing this. Because <sighs> it's not a bad idea to do this if you're reviving a vehicle to pull the plugs out and to check uh, to see, you know, how it is. So if we open the hood here, which unfortunately this hood does have a little bit of rotten in it, it's not horrible. It could be worse. Um, so we're in here, right? And now, I forgot that we bent that. <sighs> pulling it out and we kind of broke some things. We were pulling it out of the bush because Ron didn't want to crawl underneath, but like I would have, but he just did it anyways. But yeah, so this is the 296 and it's a manual car. And basically what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna pull these plugs out because who knows how old they are. And I want to see the overall condition of the plugs to be honest, so. Let's see what we can discover here. And these plug wires actually look to be in good shape too. Now this is a surprise. This plug is coming out no problems. I thought this was going to be like all sort of like really difficult. Oh, it was loose actually. I'm tightening it. No. Hang on. No, I was loosening it. Yeah. But the reason why this is just a parts car that I'm not going to get it on the road is because the shock towers are gone. But the shock towers are starting to go on my Mustang, but I will fix that. Let's check out these plugs. All those running rich. Plug is a little melty. Oh, as I just drop it. <laughs> Ah, well, hang on. I'll grab that plug and then, yeah, we'll have to see this as time lapse here. All right, well, those plugs are pretty stuck in there. Like, the first one came out really easy. The second one came out relatively easy. The third one was a real pain. The fourth one is just kind of like seized in pretty good so meanwhile I have never actually popped this off as you can tell by the mouse turds on top of it to see uh, the carburetor which uh, there we go um there is one more there we go there we go hey ripped it right off cool all right, yeah, so it still has the EGR valve on here. Not surprising. There you go. It's a little better. Because, yeah, uh, it is a rebuilt carb, actually. Because it's got the Autolite tag on it, or auto line tag, so that's a reman carb. And, well, they definitely got some life out of this uh, air filter here. It's quite dirty. But good enough for our purposes because really we're probably not even going to run an air cleaner on this thing. Um, I'll just need to do, because like they haven't deleted the emissions off this one, which is kind of nice. 
you don't have to do that with this. Because a lot of the vacuum-based emissions are gone. But yeah, you can see that under the 200 inline 6 in here. And yeah, with a little auto line, one barrel, auto light carb there. It still has a lot of its... Okay, interesting. That's how they have the PCV go in. Which realistically, you can just get rid of that, that top one. Like, it's got two lines that run off the PCV valve. And also... So this does have... Interesting. Because mine didn't have this. So you see down here... There is this, this tube here. That comes out of every cylinder. I thought Fairmont's only got that, but I guess the Caprice could have it too. And this is a high mount starter, just like Stitches, so... Um, with the transmission. So yeah, like eventually, like this thing will get stripped out and... Uh, we're gonna pull the motor and transmission out, or maybe just leave the motor in and pull the tranny out. But... We're gonna be doing that at Keith's place, cause screw trying to do that in my driveway. But yeah, anyways... Alright, see what else we can find. Alright, so I've resorted to a small pry bar instead with an extension on it. And so the ratchet, and we'll see how this goes. We're trying to get this off, because man, this is a royal pain in my ass. Oh, there we go. What a world of difference it is when you can get a bit of... Bit of leverage on it. Perfect. All right. That is one plug out, and again, it's melty just like the last ones were. So my guess is there's a problem with the ignition, which is pretty common on. With these Duraspark ignitions, because Duraspark ignitions suck. I don't care what anybody says, they are terrible. Oh, all right, now this one should go pretty easy. I'm gonna get the pry bar here. It's just a mini pry bar, but it works. Got it from uh, it's a Mastercraft one from Canadian Tire. Holy shit. Really? <clears throat> wow. Yeah. That's what I'm contending with. So, alright. Let's figure this out. Well, no wonder I was having problems getting this one out. Um, it snapped. No, it came out. You can see the back side of it too. You know, that's, that's the first time I've ever actually broken a plug coming out. <sighs> but luckily, it looks like... Oh yeah, it was a clean break too. No shrapnel in the cylinder. Win! Alright, well now let's see if I break the last one. <laughs> oh. So much for reusing these plugs. Or attempting to reuse them. Because I might, I think I have some used plugs around. I just have to look. So I can throw in this just as a quick little test. But, alright, let's get the last one and see if this one will break too. I'd prefer if it didn't break. This throttle cable's are great in my way. There we go. Oh, there we go. That one came easy. Alright. That one wasn't so bad. Oh, okay, I need the adapter. And just give me that. There we go. Alright. I'm surprised the cylinder six came out easier than some of the middle ones because usually cylinders like the the last like two cylinders are the worst to come out and the worst one to come out was probably the third oh. and this motor all right that should
should just pop right on out here. Alright, perfect, just like that. Alright. Yeah, definitely melty, just like the rest. Because you can see it's just a little bit on the back side of this plug here that it is melted just a tiny, tiny bit. Which again, that is classic Dirk's Dura Spark ignition issues. So, all right, well now, I'm gonna go find a funnel and we'll put some marble mystery oil in here, let it sit, and then we're gonna clean out the car and see what all the parts actually have, because I actually don't know. All right, now nice and easy. I just grab my funnel, grab a bit of marble mystery oil. You don't need like a ton. You're not trying to fill the cylinder, you're just trying to get a little bit of it. That should be good, honestly. Just about that much down the holes. Because all I'm doing is just trying to, what this is doing is lubricating the, uh, the cylinders. And in particular, the, um, the piston rings. Because I don't think the piston rings are actually, um, working as well as they could. So, oh, that cylinder's like at the top because it was leaking out. All right. Just like so. Again, not too much. I'm only gonna use about half a bottle here. And this stuff is amazing. You can get it, I mean, I got this at Canadian Tire, but realistically you can buy it at almost any auto parts store. Um, and it was only 14 bucks. So, and it, and Marvel Mystery Oil has been around for a long time, like over a hundred years. And, you know, it works incredibly well. Like say your engine's burning a bit of oil, just put some of this in it. You'd be surprised. It might actually seal up your, uh, like get the seals all rejuvenated and stuff like that. That worked on my old Capri. Cause it was burning oil pretty good actually. So, all right, now we're gonna let that sit. And now I'm gonna clean out the car and see what all is in the car. All right, so here's all the parts. So this is an 8.8 .8 rear end. Those are 373 gears, which is kind of nice. We got this factory Ford four barrel intake here. We've got the V8 K member out of an aero car. We've got the tail light panel here. We've got what I believe is a world-class T5 right here. And actually in the back of the car still right there with the rest of the parts being like here. So it's kind of a hodgepodge. A lot of the stuff has been taken apart. You know, we've got extra mirrors here. We've got seat belts. Yeah, so. Seat belts, which those are. Uh, that, yeah, actually, no. That is out of a Thunderbird, I think, actually. I mean, it does kind of actually say T Bird on it. Right, where was that? Right here. But they might actually work in a Fox than a regular Mustang. I do not know. Um, let's see here. Unless they all just said that, but I don't think they did. You know, some nice, um, they're a little wet, but you know, let those dry out. And yeah, some people want those, definitely. Uh, another seatbelt. another mirror so I've got two sets of mirrors and then a set of mirrors on the car um I only got one of the sail panels like this box is falling apart just check that out yeah so no this is really cool to find all of this in the car now it's kind of sad that I've only got one of the sail panels I thought there was two in here but well let's see what's in this box actually because I see some seat rails in here um, let's see, so I'm just gonna take stuff out. So yeah, seat rails. Uh, 
There's an oil pickup. There you go. Oil pickup for likely a 302. Um, the other seat rail is kind of caught on some stuff here. Come on. There we go. Just like that. Um. Well, this does say water pump on it. Nissan pump, but what's actually in the box? This box just has some miscellaneous bolts and a gasket for a, um, now this is interesting, professional products thing, but for that water pump, I guess. Um, let's see, what's in this little one? Oh, we have, wait a minute, are those push rods? Yeah, we got push rods in here. Some push rods and some bolts. But what are these push rods for? I'm gonna assume a 302, but. Cause like I said, you can tell that somebody was planning this 302 swap, this uh, inline six Capri over here. But uh, yeah, no, this is pretty cool. All right, let's see what else is there. Oh, there's a clutch fork there. Um, there's some fuel rails here. Nice stainless rails. That might be for the injected 302 setups, I think. Yeah, it's factory. Um, definitely. Maybe 4.6. Two sets of rails. There you go. Those are kind of cool, actually. Fine. Uh, let's see here. We've got... Oh, the injector harness for a 302. Um... Some of the emission stuff, vacuum-based emissions for the injected 302s. Got a clutch fork here, which, yeah, that's a Fox body clutch fork. So, cause fun fact, we actually had to use two of these plus a 66 fork to make that one work for the T5 swap and that. So, yeah, it's fun dealing with these inline sixes, but yeah, no, this is pretty awesome to find in here. Uh. Is that a transmission part? No, that's a that's a hub. Yeah. Well, it's not spline though. Actually, what is this? Oh, someone might tell me in the comments. But yeah, this is this is a pretty sweet little honey hole. You know, just a couple little minor things in here still. But uh, ah, that is that's inside of the door actually. That is to when you pull the door. This is what you're actually pulling on to open the door. All right. Well, there's a lot of stuff here. And there's some value here, like just in parts. Like I can probably get my money back out of what I have here to what I paid for the car. So that's not so bad. And all these parts, anything you see here is available. So if you're interested, let me know. Um, actually, I should check out what's all in this one. Cause I think it's just the transmission parts. Cause I can see an input shaft sitting there. Um, here's the top of the transmission. Yeah, that's the top of it. There's another clutch fork that's pretty, you know, needs to be cleaned up. Yeah, just a bunch of transmission parts and some hoses and stuff. That's all that's in here. So I don't know if all the parts are around for this little, I think it's a T5. Um, it's just blown apart completely. But if you're interested, let me know. And uh, well, I guess there is an extra mirror in here. There you go. <sighs> All right. Yeah, this thing is just so damn cool. You know, and I can't wait to see if this thing will actually run. Because like I said, I'm going to let that Marvel Mr. Oil sit in there for a day. And we shall go from there. So, yeah. Stay tuned, even though it'll just be like the next scene in this that you'll see. So, anyways. <laughs> All right. It is now about 24 hours later of pulling the plugs out and putting the Marvel Mystery Oil down the cylinders. So now I'm gonna turn the motor over by hand just to see if it feels any better because the one thing is that I forgot to show you is before I did that, it was not feeling quite right it felt like it was like low on compression so that's why i did this and it's not a bad idea to do that with a vehicle that's that considering 
something I want to show you guys is something I found in the car, which doesn't perfectly date when it was parked, but it might come close. It's this old Pepsi can, which when's the last time you saw one of these? It's been a while. I remember drinking these as a kid and, you know, just seeing the script and everything. It's just different. Like, this is probably, I don't know, 15 years old, give or take. That was kind of a cool find, honestly. 15, 20 years, something like that. Like I said, it's been a long time since I drank one of those. But anyways, let's try and turn the motor over. And then plus we'll see the Marvel Mystery Oil come out of the cylinders here as I'm doing this. So... The one that should be first up is going to be either this one or this one, because one of those cylinders are at the top. One of those two, I just can't remember which one it was. But, ah, has I got water dripping on my head? How's this one? All right. Let's see. Oh, that feels way better now. Oh, absolutely. Oh, it's in gear. Hang on. <laughs> the vehicle's moving. <laughs> works because i didn't engage the clutch for it not to be in gear anymore that was uh okay there we go all right so now yeah feels all right ah well i'm not seeing any fluid come out of those so now what i want to do is i want to replace the battery with the one out of stitch and see what's what now. The big question is, are these tight or loose? They're both really tight, so okay. I mean, even this, this battery is pretty old too. I can't even see the age of it on here, but that's a very old battery, so let's take this out and drop in my Optima. There we go. I got the Optima here. Still need to take this battery out, but that's not a problem. Ooh. That Optima's heavy. Heavy. Oh, these are way... That, okay, that one... Okay, that's an interesting size. And this... Oh, crap. Wow. All right, I'm gonna need the vice grips on that side. Yep, definito. There we go. All right, I want to see. crap that's really tight on there oh, and it broke no surprise there there we go that's fine now this one's gonna be a bitch to get off because I need to figure out what size it is oh, okay There we go. At least it's moving. All right, let's see what size that is. It's probably like smaller than 7 16 All right, now let's see. Will this one break too? Probably. But I figured it out. So, okay. Put the vice grips back on there. Hopefully, I can get a good grip on them. Uh, let's 
it's not the best grip, but it's too bad it wasn't just already like a little bit loose. So it's just a just a tiny bit loose. Because that would make this so much easier. All right, there we go. Because this is probably going to end up breaking as well. Oh wow, it's actually getting loose, but there we go. Perfect. All right, let's get this battery out. Let's get the other one in. So, there we go. one in be like that there we go even though this battery doesn't probably fit in the battery tray i already know that but actually that one fitted pretty nicely surprisingly usually they do not is this a different battery tray huh i might need to steal this battery tray for for my mustang all right batteries in now let's see if she'll turn over here um, I just need a screwdriver. All right, now let's see. I've got my universal key here, which is literally just a flathead screwdriver. No, I got nothing. No electrics. So, because I turned that, I'm getting nothing and I know this thing doesn't have a neutral safety switch so because I can even do this and nothing still so all right so the only other thing that I can do to see if this thing will even run is try and jump the solenoid so that's what I'm gonna do now because it's already unlocked here and you know the ignition should be on so, because all I'm doing, I just wanted to turn it over without the plugs in it first to try and clear out any of the excess compression that might be in there because I've actually heard stories of people doing that with new plugs in it and doing exactly what I've done and completely destroying the plugs on the way out. They would just shoot right out. So, that's what I'm trying to do right now. Like, even though I turn the motor over by hand, um, I still want to do that. So, let's see what I can uh, come up with here. Because I should, really. I've got the screwdriver here. Because realistically, if I just do this... Um... Because, okay. No, I'm not getting anything. And this solenoid might be cooked, too. But if I can get power straight to this cable here, which is the starter wire, I should be able to get this thing to start with any luck, unless it's just pooch, because it might be. The motor's not seized, but you know, starter solenoid might be, and I don't feel like pulling it out of my car. So hang on a moment. All right, I have my jumper cables, and all I really need to do, because I don't need the negative side, I just need the positives. So if I put this clamp, on like that, and then nope, that is not working. However, let's try it right on the starter itself. I've got nothing so either there is a bad ground on this thing somewhere or who knows what which is really disappointing because I don't really want to delve into this too deeply I just wanted to see if it would run and drive but ah uh, that sucks because maybe maybe I'll do it this way
Yeah, no, that's just welding. So, ah, shoot. Well, this is not working out as planned. Like, if I put a new star solenoid on here, um, that might do the trick. But then again, why is it that when I take it straight to the starter that it does not want to actually start? Um, there's got to be a ground somewhere on here that is bad, but like the engine ground up here is okay. Um, yeah, which actually, interesting. That is put on a different spot than it, oh! Ah, this ground may not be as good as I thought it was, actually. Maybe if I, hang on. Let's try giving it a better ground. So just ground here and then ground it to, um, I just need to ground it to the body or something like that. You know what? Just ground it straight to the battery here. That'll work. All right. Now let's try doing that again. So got it on here and Still getting nothing. Let's try again on the starter. Hmm, all right. That's not gonna work. The only other thing that I could attempt to do is if I push this out and push it down the alley and pop the clutch, would it actually start? The only problem is I don't have enough strength to push it back here though, if that doesn't work. So, hmm. There's obviously like a ground or something that is bad here, or the wiring itself is just pooched. Um, because realistically, we should get the starter to turn, but with... Yeah, I just, I don't know. This is interesting. Um, here, let's move this ground, actually, to... Let's see, where do I want to move it to? You know what? Right onto the exhaust manifold. Might work. Come on. If I can get on the exhaust manifold. There we go. That'll work. The EGR tube works just as well. Alright. Now let's try this again. Well, alright. Maybe move the ground from the battery to maybe the motor mount. Uh, which is right, right there. I could also do it to the K member, but that's probably my best shot. Yeah, no, I'm just welding. That's all I'm doing. It's a good ground though, because it's welding a lot better. But. Ah, this sucks. Alright, well, I guess she's not really going to turn over at all. Like, the only thing I could, like I said, potentially do is try and bump start it. But, I don't know, we shall see. Um, we shall see with that. So, let's see what I come up with. Stop reporting. Oh, and the positive came right off, just like that. Because there should be enough. I do wonder, actually. Hang on. I just, had an, I just had an epiphany. Come on. Because if this is not tight enough, it's possible. Possible that this wouldn't work. So let me just try again on the interior. This will turn it over with the key. Oh. Well, we got something there. What happened? All right. So I was onto something. I don't know what just went, but something did click. Was that the solenoid itself? 
I'm gonna have to review the footage here. Hang on. All right, so it looks like we sparked off the battery there. So, well, now let's just see. Because we're getting closer to something. You know, at least we've gotten some form of like some form of life here. Nope. Now I've got nothing again. I don't have any electrics whatsoever. Yeah, I don't think I have any electrics at all. So that's gonna be a ground or something. Uh, let's see. Any headlights? No headlights. So let's see. Are any of the taillights on? Because they're out of the car actually. Because I pulled them the other day. Well, I was live on TikTok. <sighs> Let's see. Nope, I see no bulbs on in here. So, okay. Well, that's interesting. So I got no electrics. So, there's definitely some wiring issues in this car, to say the least. Um, well, I'm gonna have to tinker with this a little more to see what I can come up with. But, uh, yeah. See what I can figure out. All right, so I pillage stitch for the positive cable here, which I lost the nut, but that's okay. I can just uh, steal one from the new solenoid. Didn't need a new starter solenoid because, well, I kind of jumped the gun. I mean, I bought a starter solenoid. You can see it in this little box here. It's actually kind of a reddish pinkish color, but you know, you can see it right there, right? Just a cheapy one from Amazon. No big deal. Cause I didn't feel like spending, you know, like 60 bucks on a decent one, but check this out. So, Get in here, right? Get my, uh, make sure that the sparkles are out of the way. Let's put up some dash here. There we go. So get in here. And, lo and behold, get a screwdriver in there. And, so that's a good sign. The starter is working. Um, now the big question is, oh, yo, let's go. Tickets are tickets. Cool. Stereo works. Let's freaking go. All right, now let's turn off the power there so that, you know, it's not just draining the battery. So we've got electrics now. We got the stereo working. All right, now what I need to do is I need to reinstall the spark plugs and I'll see this thing fires off. I mean, well, first off, actually, what I should do is, was this an AC cart? No. What is this extra bracket here? What? I just noticed this now. What is this extra bracket doing here? Or unless that's part of the motor mount thing. Oh, they have all of this as one piece. Um, this is for if you have air conditioning, it would go right here. Interesting, interesting. All right, well, let's see what we can figure out here. Whee! And we are all just about done right here. All right, now that that's all figured out there, let's see if this thing will start. So I got my universal key right here. And it's so nice that the radio actually works in this thing, which is kind of cool. Because I'm going to attempt to drive this thing if I can. Okay. All right, that's a good sign. So we've got compression and everything, which is a good, good sign. So, okay, now let's look at some gasolina and pour it down the carburetor. All right, I've got some gas, so I'm gonna pour a bit down the carb. Well, actually a decent amount in the carb, like not a ton, but just enough to see if it's a single fire. Okay, that's, that's more than enough. All right, now I'll see if it'll run off of that because then I know it has spark if it does light off here and make sure that is not gonna get caught in the uh, fan. That'd be a bad thing. It's gonna go flying, it's destroy the fan. You know, all that jazz. Well, let's see.
right. Now, I'm gonna let it die here. Like, I mean, what else is this fuel in it? I have no idea, because the gas gauge is not working. So I'm just waiting for it to die. For so far, it's actually running half diesel. Yeah, you can see the little tailpipe right there, which that's interesting how that's routed. You can see it just behind the bumper there. Um, and hey, look at that. We've got a light working. See, there's a light working. I don't know if any of the other ones are, but oh yeah, there are. Look at that. We've got functional electricals and everything. I could potentially take this for a drive. I mean, I didn't have to reinstall the, uh, the tail lights, but no, that's freaking awesome. This thing's running. Haha. Now, I'm kind of surprised that this hasn't died yet. Unless it's running off its own fuel system, which it seems like it is. That's incredible. Oh. Because I do want to see... Okay, now the big question... Okay, it's been idling for a little bit now. Will this thing... sitting for like 10 years damn so hang on let, let me let me clean up some of my tools and uh we'll drive this on the block and see how it goes all right let's see how this goes so yeah none of my gauges appear to be working i do not have power steering working Wait, hang on. I need to take that off. Because I'm not going to go very fast here. Wow. So, okay. really quick here and grab the funnel okay it's a neutral <laughs> this is just amazing so first it's just straight up And I don't have 
any power steering working, but man, this is just amazing. here so that's reverse that's reverse okay it kind of feels like there might be a short shifter in there too but yeah it went around the block and runs drives it stops not extremely well but the brake booster's not really working but wow Ugh. no power steering though it might just be low on fluid but I am really, really surprised that this thing did that. Oh, oh damn. Oh, there we go. That should be first. just around the block and perfect all right now let's just shut it off there you go just like that that worked so well there you go put it in first there <laughs> well thank you guys so so much for watching this video i can't believe this thing runs and drives that is amazing wow and it runs off its own fuel system like I don't know how much fuel is in it because none of the gauges work other than like the tack works, speedometer works, temperature doesn't work, fuel gauge doesn't work. Or actually no, the fuel gauge does work. It was just like at the empty rather than all the way down here. So there's a little bit of fuel in there, not a ton. So yeah, this car, honestly, like I wouldn't be afraid. Like if I repaired those shock towers, I wouldn't be afraid to honestly take this thing for a road trip. Really wouldn't. But uh, yeah, at least now we know it runs and drives, so. Stay tuned for the next video. Thank you so, so much for watching. And uh, yeah, this was a long episode, but worthwhile. So all it was was just like a dirty connection on the thing. So now I gotta steal that back, put it on my Mustang. Cause uh, yeah, I'm with the battery back in my Mustang. So anyways, take care and I'll catch you in the next one. Well, the Capri is going 80 kilometers an hour in fourth. Now the steering wheel is very shaky, that's because these tires are like junk on it, but it's actually very good. Like this car, now the big question is, will it? Alright, well, it doesn't stop the best, but... I mean, it probably needs some... Uh... You know, I'll probably need some brake work or whatever else, but this car's not bad. I mean, 
The shock towers are the issue on this car, really. There you go, back into fourth, and just amazing that this thing is running and driving as good as it is. Like, I just put some 93 octane, I only put about 24 liters into it, but she's running like a top. Honestly, I'm very happy with this. All right, let's do a zero to 60 test here, and let's just see.